Hey friends, Ash here with Gen Sense. How are you doing? Hope you're doing well. Today we're gonna to be talking about seven mind-blowing fragrances. <laughs> yeah, mind-blowing, or maybe just really good. What will happen if you never smell these fragrances? Because I, I, again, I feel like everybody should smell these at least once. What will happen if you don't? Um, you lose your job, car breaks down, that could happen. Your girlfriend or wife leaves you. <gasps> Oh no. The government realizes that you've been laundering money and throws you into prison for the rest of your life. Realistically, none of those things, but you should still smell. So let's jump into it. Let's check these out. Seven fragrances that I think are really good. And today's video is brought to you courtesy of scentsplit.com. Link in the description to their website. Make sure to check them out. They sell uh, decants, samples, and also full-size bottles uh, of different fragrances from different fragrance companies. You got great decants. I've actually bought from them before numerous times and I've featured some of the decants on the channel as well. They look like this or they look like that or, or smaller if you buy a smaller one. But yeah, sensplit.com, check them out. Samples, decants, full-size bottles, everything authentic, fast shipping, great customer service. It's good stuff. All right, fragrance time, let's do it. First up from Bortnikoff, it's Triad. This is an straight to parfum. Rose, Tonka, Hyrax, and a boatload of oud. I'm talking a lot, multiple types of oud. Not one of those fragrances where you just see it and it says oud in the notes. No friend, here you're getting multiple types. You're getting a plethora of oud, a spectrum of oud. Now with this being a Bortnikoff, especially an extract to parfum Bortnikoff, it ain't cheap. <laughs> No way to beat around the bush there, but you're getting what you pay for here. This is Rose and Oud taken up a notch and another and a few more notches as well. And if the only Rose Oud type of fragrances that you've ever smelled are of the designer variety, nothing against those, I love designer fragrances, but if those are the only designer Ouds that you've ever smelled, you really, you really haven't started to scratch the surface of how those can come across. And this is not just simply a rose oud fragrance that is dumbing it down a bit, but we don't have all day. Uh, simply put, Bortnikoff Triad is an insanely wearable and yet extremely luxurious rose oud fragrance that will last approximately your entire lifetime if you spray it onto clothing. Now we go to a house that was once upon a time the hyped love child of the entire fragrance community where every fragrance it seemed that this brand came out with, people couldn't wait to hype it up. You know, everybody's just lining up, <laughs> hype, hype, hype. Maybe they weren't doing that, but that's how it seemed. It's uh, Pardon from Nasamato. It's got chocolate, oud, tonka, sandalwood, though I think officially Nasamato never really gives no breakdown. So that's pretty much just people agreeing. Yeah, that's how it smells. And this one smells a bit similar to L'Anston de Guerlain Extreme, also known as Lidge from Guerlain, which is a fantastic scent in its own right. And that's also one that you should smell. And really uh, modern bottles of that at discounters go for next to nothing, frankly, for how good they smell. But if you want that scent profile taken, up a notch, once again, taken up to the next level. This is what you need to check out. Ooh, it's rich, it's sweet, it's woodsy, it's masculine, it's classy. All those things wrapped up and, and boiled down very concentratedly, con concentratedly, yeah, into this 30 mil size bottle. Once again, an extrait to parfum, from one extrait to another, not some auto part all. I think you've got to smell this. And as far as the masculine fragrances in Nasamato's lineup, this is the first one I would tell you to check out. Now it's time to go diptyking, which is kind of like antiquing, where you look for antiques, but here you're looking for diptyques. That doesn't make any sense, that's stupid. The fragrance is Tam Dao. The house is dip tea. So this one has sandalwood, cedar, rosewood, cypress, and spices. And like a lot of fragrances from the house of dip tea, it has the quality that you would expect from a niche fragrance with the price not being astronomical, especially compared to a lot of houses out there. And it has great wearability to it. So even though it is a niche fragrance through and through, at the same time, 
it's a fragrance that you can easily pull off that people are going to like it doesn't take you know a lot of courage to to spray it on and wear it out in public so it, it's this great kind of balance and that's one of the things i love about the house of diptyque so much it's because they're affordable, they're wearable, but they're still luxurious. Now with this one having some dry woodiness, a little bit of creaminess from the sandalwood, uh, good fresh spices popping as soon as you spray it on and into the dry down. It, it's a great, very versatile fragrance. Springtime, fall time. I'd wear it in winter as well. Summer I'd probably go for something else, but there's a lot to love about this. And the presentations I dig as well. Simple, they're clean just like uh, the theme song to Kingdom Hearts. And also I dig the back of the stickers because they got they got pictures. Uh, now let's do some tower action, Andy Tower. Now his most well-known fragrance is uh, LDDM, Le du Desert Maracan. Yeah, that's pretty, probably pretty bad, my pronunciation, but that one, that's the most popular. But this one, I think also right up there with it. This is the second fragrance that I ever bought from the house, and it is Lone Star Memories. Number three, Lone Star Memories. Leather, myrrh, uh, vetiver, labdanum, and tonka, some of the notes in the fragrance. And what appealed to me about this one is it's just kind of the idea. It's got that Red Dead Redemption vibe to it, you know, cowboy around a, a fire, and then the name Lone Star Memories. It just sounds cool. And sometimes it really is that simple. <laughs> when you're looking for a fragrance, you see something that has this really neat write-up describing it, the name, the notes, everything just comes together and you think to yourself, yeah, I gotta get that. That's what happened. And is there leather in here? <laughs> oh yeah, in a big way. And the leather here is not that really sweet, easy to pull off, you know, like boozy type of leather that you'll find in date night fragrances and, and things of that nature. Instead here, you're getting something that's a little bit oily. You know, it's got a, like it's been smeared almost with this, this tinge of gasoline, uh, remnants of the fire that were, that were put out a little bit uh, in the past, kind of lingering this little hint of smoke that wafts throughout. It's at times slightly animalic. It's one of those fragrances that doesn't really give a crap if you like it or not. It's doing its own thing and I love it. <laughs> it's a great fragrance, just like uh, LDDM. I mean, that one, you know, a lot of people will say, I'm enamored with the way it smells. I love the way it smells, but uh, I don't really wear it a lot. Same thing happens with Lone Star Memories. Although for me personally, at this point, Lone Star Memories and LDDM, I'll wear both of those, I don't care. Next one is a little bit of a blast from the past for me. It's from Amouage. It's one of the fragrances that I think is best from the house. Also one that doesn't live up to the hype, or that's not the right way to put it. It doesn't get the hype that some of the other fragrances from the house do. It's Memoir Man. Now the reason Memoir Man is a little bit of a blast from the past for me is because I got this one in back when my channel was fairly new and uh, reviewed it way back then. Terrible video, don't watch it. It's, it's one of those fragrances that marks in my mind an earlier part of my channel. And this thing has grown on me a bunch over time. Uh, it's one of those fragrances that I just appreciate more and more each time I smell it. So you've got wormwood, tobacco, incense, leather, even mint in here. And it's dark, it's woodsy, but at the same time, it's green. You've got smoke from the incense. It's so well done and interesting because of the contrast that you have going on. Performance again, like you'd expect from Homage, through the roof, great bang for your buck. It's a solid, solid fragrance. It's mysterious. It's, it's a little mature, sexy, kind of. Memoir is a great, great fragrance. And if you're into the House of Amouage, it's one that you gotta try. Oh, another personal favorite, Cape Heartache. 
from Imaginary Authors. This is an old bottle. Yeah, it's got the really old atomizer. They don't make them like this anymore. This was a 60 milliliter size. They're 50 milliliters now. Got the notes on the back, like always. Douglas fir, pine resin, western hemlock, vanilla leaf, strawberry, old growth, and mountain fog. So those two notes are the imaginary notes. Every Imaginary Authors fragrance has at least uh, one, usually a couple of uh, imaginary notes. So old growth and mountain bog. Now, for me personally, the things I like, the things I like to smell, the things I like to smell like, I think the best two fragrances from imaginary authors are Cape Heartache and Memoirs of a Trespasser. I think those are the two best. So if you're gonna start anywhere, I would start with those, but it's possible that you get those and try them and like them or love them if you're into a lot of the same stuff I am. And then you end up buying more and more from imaginary authors and some of them just don't quite, don't quite cut it. Although they have some great, great other releases, those two are the best. And more of a trespasser, K-Party. It has some strawberry sweetness in there, which is really apparent and, and quite unique. You don't get anything that really smells like that in fragrances, very rarely anyway, I should say. And then you have, like a pine forest it does smell like you're in a, a dark again like i said with memoir slightly mysterious forest i love to smell this so i'm just gonna i gotta give it a spray yeah Ooh, that's good man yeah it reminds me of of uh, late fall heading into winter especially of a tester strip the strawberry is kicking in that first couple minutes it's got a punch okay heartache always a love of mine. Great introduction to the house of imaginary authors. Like I said, also memoirs of a trespasser. I personally like a sitting on fire. Some people think it smells like bacon. Some people think it smells like uh, a match, like when you strike a match. That one is also worth checking out, if nothing else, because it's quite unique. Last but not least from Creed, Royal Oud. Yeah, the house of Creed. Nobody's ever heard of them before. Now it kind of goes without saying, if you've never smelled a Ventus, if you've never smelled uh, Green Irish Tweed, Millicene Imperial, Silver Mountain Water, yeah, you should smell those at some point also, for sure. But Royal Oud, especially in fall and winter, I think is one of the easiest to wear, classiest, most sophisticated niche fragrances that's going to appeal to just about everybody. Both people that are into niche, people that are into the finer fragrances, and people that are just into smelling good. It appeals to everyone. It's got cedar, sandalwood, oud, and pink pepper as some of the notes in the fragrance. I've mentioned this pretty much every time I bring this fragrance up, but even though the name is Royal Oud, and it's uh, all done up in black and gold, it's not really that oody. It's not that dark. Truly, even though it's Royal Oud, the cedar, and the sandalwood, especially the cedar, are just as prominent, if, if not more prominent, than the oud that's in here. And in the trace amounts of oud that you do pick up in Royal Oud, there's not a not a hint of animalics or fecal notes or anything like that. You don't have to worry about it. Really, it's this masculine, uh, sophisticated, uh, kingly, almost, woodsy fragrance with fresh spices. It is great. It's one of the best fragrances from the House of Creed. So there we have it guys, seven fragrances that I feel like everybody should smell at least once. Yeah, they're skewed a little bit more toward uh, fall and winter time fragrances, but that's because I'm filming this in uh, January and it's below freezing outside. <laughs> Maybe around summer when it's really hot, we'll do it again with uh, fragrances that work then. All right, guys, thank you for hanging with me till the end here. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for all your support. Again, shout out to Scent Split. Check them out in the description. Stay safe out there, guys. I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you later.